Uh, for me, these type of wins are more special to me because nothing was perfect about it. And you still find a way to win against a really good SMU team. NCAA team, well coached. Uh, went out and got some great pieces to surround the guys that came back from last year. I knew what kind of game it was going to be because they've always played us tough no matter what game, when Katie was there and whatever. So I didn't expect anything less from them. I'm a little disappointed in some areas with us, but, man, the second half we played was, was phenomenal. Questions? Penny, uh, these past two weeks with, I guess, three – you know, kind of lackluster performances, and now, you know, what happened with Caleb Mills. Is that the most adversity this team's faced, um, that stretch um, in the season? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we never said it was going to be easy. The rest of the nation thinks it's going to be easy in this conference. I have so much respect for every team, how I run the practices, how I talk to the guys. It's like every game is a high major game because these kids are capable, man. They, they, they read all the clippings about us, FAU, they see the nation talk about that they're not good. It's not even close. SMU is an NCAA team. It's more than a two-bid league. And I'll, I'll always say that. I'm not just saying it. And uh, we're always going to get a good game. But the adversity is OK. You know, you can learn from it. And um, thank God we're learning from it while we're winning. And what's the diagnosis or with Mills? What, what's going on with that? Kneecap. You know, he got. <clears throat> I think it's um, – I don't know the proper – I don't have my phone. I know I got texted to me or whatever, but you have that? Fracture patella. Fracture patella. And he's done for the – Done for the season. He's having surgery, too. Coach, kind of take oh, – first off, great win. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, take us to that timeout with the last seconds in the game. Yeah, I, I like to – you know, in practice – it goes back to practice where I'll just pull the board up and I'll have a segment where I'll just draw up different plays – and just have the guys executed against one, one another. And it pays off during the game because 85% of the things that I draw up after a timeout are new. And we execute it. And uh, that's how I've always had my teams. But that play was to have a double uh, stagger away for Jaden. And while that was going on, have JQ dribble at David to go back door to see if that was available with the low man being moved by, you know, Jaden coming off the stagger. And last thing was him to ISO and take the last shot. So we got to the third option, and it worked again. Coach, you guys were out-rebounded in the first half, 25 to 9, with 12 of those rebounds being offensive. What was said at halftime to really motivate your, your guys because the whole shift changed rebounding-wise? Yeah, I, I put up 12 offensive rebounds, them, tw 13 defensive rebounds, them, us two offensive rebounds, us seven defensive rebounds, 25 to nine. Do I need to say any more? Do I need to say anything more? And they didn't say anything. They were like, okay, understood. I'm like, hey, we're not going to panic, but we do have to fight because they're fighting harder than us in our building. And we came out and, you know, held them to 23 points and, and out rebounded them. Hey, Penny, with Mills out the lineup, you know, he did a lot of things, especially with the second unit. How's that going to affect the dynamics going forward with the first unit and the second unit? It affects it a lot because Caleb was one of our leaders. He was the most vocal. He's probably the best defender on ball. And then he could get it going offensively as well. So it's going to, you know, it's going to cause us to have to shift in major ways. It's going to be by committee with Jalen Young, Jaden Hardaway, Ashton Hardaway. Um, those guys have to combine together to really – make up for what Caleb brought to the table. And collectively, hopefully, we can, we can do that with those guys. And then I still have Carl over there, Carl sharing front. And I really want to give Jonathan Pierre an opportunity. I know I hate to say that, but it's just every time we get in these tight games, it's hard for me to call his name and put him in that situation. So I got to get him, get those guys more prepared. Um, for, forgive me if, if you've talked about this uh, already. I was doing something else, but um, the defensive possession that ended with the jump ball under the, under the basket where Jaden, late in the game where I think Jaden was credited with the block and Nick Jordan was down there as well. Um, what did you see on that? I mean, that was a huge point 
I mean, obviously it was it was critical to, to get. Yeah, a we always talk about kills. You know, if you look at our board when we go into a timeout, that's three stops in a row. And we were just talking about getting a kill at the end, and then at the that last play that you talked about, it's just getting a stop. It's basically like guarding your yard, taking it personal, and making it very difficult on that guy to get a look at the basket. And like you said, Jaden blocked it, and then Nick got on the floor, 50-50 ball. We just got to get to that point of desperation every minute. It's been hard, but I'm not complaining because we our ceiling is still really high. We're still really getting to know one another at this point. So, man, winning while getting better, it feels good because you're winning. And obviously, you know, no excuses. You guys say that all the time. But um, the tr getting out of Tulsa was a tough thing for you guys. Did that have any – did you feel like that had an effect on the, on the way you guys started today? No, I don't think it had an effect. It should have had an effect the other way. We should have came out way tougher because of what happened. We gave up a 14-point lead at Tulsa. So, you know, again, there were no, no excuses – from our side, we know we have to do better, but we're winning while we're getting better, which is to me is a good sign. When JQ hit the game winner uh, against Tulsa, you said post game that that wasn't really a, exactly the plan. He just kind of did that on his own accord. Well, was it the plan to put the ball in his hands this time around, or did he? Yeah, for sure. He was the third option. Well, actually, he was the second option because the the stagger was fluff. We wanted them to overplay the stagger and then give Dave a backdoor for a layup. And then when it didn't happen, I trusted that he was going to take the last shot and have an opportunity to get a good look. How do you think he just does this? How do you think he is able to come through in these types of situations? Countless hours of work since he was very young, in the gym, on the playground, putting himself in that situation. Every kid dreams of that, having the ball in their hands in the countdown and making the shot. And that's what he did. Penny, you've had lackadaisical performances. What is it going to take? for y'all to come out and play up to your potential rather than go through a first half like you did? I just have to keep saying the same things different ways because we're very well aware of what you're talking about. But again, give the other teams credit. We're not going to be like the rest of the nation. I mean, I'm not saying that SMU is Purdue, but at the end of the day, they're a really good team that should be in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I, I view them that way by looking at their roster, watched a lot of games, and watched them today. Today, so but for to answer your question, it's going to take five guys first to go out there and go. Okay, we're going to be relentless for 40 minutes, and we're going to bring the rest of the guys with us. That hadn't happened yet. Maybe two or three, but never five at one time, unless it gets desperate like it does at the end of the game. Penny, we've seen throughout the season this team's confidence level is very high. You can see it at the end of the last game and this game with the shot, shot selection, body language, et cetera. Would you say that this team is one of the more confident teams that you've coached? Yeah, it's, it's almost too confident because they feel like at any moment, it doesn't matter if we're down, it's twofold to me. That's a good sign that we feel like we can win no matter what we're down. But also, we get down because we get overconfident and feeling like, oh, we'll be able to come back at any moment. And it's been – it's been on our side, and we, it hadn't come back to bite us yet, and we don't want it to. We want to change it. But, I mean, that's, that's just the way this team has been playing. Coach, let's talk about the abilities of Jalen Young. When you inserted him in the game, he was a difference maker. And uh, I have another question as well, a status update on J.J. Taylor. Yeah, Jalen is – he really deserves more minutes, man. I get caught up into the game. Such a great – him and Jaden – come into the game and give us everything they have, whether they play three minutes or 13 or 20. And I got to find a way to get Jalen back out on that court more because when he and JQ are out there, they're actually playing really well. And, um, you know, that's all on me. Uh, he definitely deserves more minutes. And he, he makes winning plays while he's out there. Uh, but when you have David and Jake Kwan with their size and their length and they're playing well, it's been hard for me to put those four guys on the floor with one big. Maybe I'll start doing that. Um, and as far as J.J. Taylor, J.J. Taylor right now is just still suspended and uh, waiting on him to, uh, to finish his suspension. Coach, Nick Jordan was a real spark for you guys defensively. Talk about what he, what he really brought to the team when you guys were struggling. Well, Nick brings the toughness and the energy no matter what's going on. He's the guy that's going to 
be relentless. He's one of the guys that's going to play his heart out for however many minutes he plays out there on the floor. And the mistakes that he makes are really nothing compares to what he brings to the table from shot block, shot blocking. He had four of those today to rebounding, to guarding one through five, running the floor, knocking down shots. It's just what it was just a major, major, major pickup for us to have, to have him with us. Can can you live with playing dangerously, even if it does come back to bite you, maybe cost you a win or two, a, 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 a couple seed spots, if it pays off in pressure situations in March? We've had enough close games in my mind. I don't want to play dangerously. I really want to be the, the coach that comes in and watch us execute on both sides of the ball and do what we're supposed to do. I mean, we're not disrespecting anyone. We want to go in the game and make it hard for them on – on both ends, being very aggressive offensively and defensively. So I don't want a loss to have to make us learn from our mistakes. I want to just learn from them and just keep going. But these teams, they're going to keep pushing the buttons against us because we're ranked. We have a number by our name. And every game is going to be tough. We have to know that. But I would love to just do what we're being taught and do it at a high level with energy and effort for 40 minutes. I got two for you real quick, but, you know, you talked about the balance between kind of letting guys be creative on offense versus reeling things in because of the turnovers and whatnot. Uh, today with 16 turnovers again and David Jones with, with four himself, do you think it's time to kind of reel things in with the team and in particular with David Jones? Yeah, I, I've been doing that every game and trying to do more of it because he's such a great player. What makes him great is what makes him bad because his confidence is so high. He'll go one against five. And then after he makes that play, and it doesn't work, he'll know right away I messed up. But that's just his – it's who he is. But then the flip side of that, he can hit five or six in a row and push the lead out. But, yeah, you have to con get control of situations because you can't just continue to just go one on five or take bad shots because, you know, you can. So, yeah, I have to – I don't, I don't want to put handcuffs on him to the point to where he loses his confidence, but we, need, we do need, need him to play smarter, not just him, everyone. And what was the second part? I'm sorry. Yeah, second part is, uh, is Jordan Brown still a part of your basketball program? Jordan Brown is still a part of the basketball program until I hear otherwise. Will he be back physically with you guys anytime soon, you think? You expect him to be back? That I don't know. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Thank you.